Well, hi, uh, it's Graham here. Um, I've been playing around with an edge finder for oh, a considerable amount of time. Um, but I've never, and, and there are lots of videos on YouTube and the internet of how to use an edge finder. But what always worried me was, well, how accurate am I actually finding the edge? And I thought, well, there's a very simple way to test this if you have a mill with a digital readout. Um, most model engineers these days have got digital readouts on their mill. Um, and why not use the digital readout in conjunction with the edge finder to actually test out whether you're using the thing properly? And there's a relatively simple way of doing it. I've got here a known reference. The the block here, oh sorry that uh, block, <laughs> Oops. the rod is a known diameter and let's have a look at this we are 0.6 of an inch. Now the edge finder, has, uh, this one's a starrett, the edge finder has a 0.2 of an inch, 200 thou diameter here. And we need to know that, obviously, when we try and locate the actual edge. The length of this um, rod will be useful to know. So let's just have a look at this. A little bit more difficult to measure the actual length, but there, hopefully, we can see that it's 0 0.2003, so 3,000 plus 2 inches, 2.003. So we've got a known diameter of 0.6 of an inch and a known length. We mount this in the mill, and now we should be in a position to actually test things out. But before I get on to that, it's worth pointing out that you should make sure that your mill is correctly trammed. By that I mean that the mill axis is vertical in both planes. Um, again, there are plenty of videos on the internet of tramming the mill, getting this vertical, and I can thoroughly recommend the uh, dual dial indicator test fixtures that are available which really do make that a lot simpler. The other thing, so we've got to get the mill head vertical in both planes, both the X axis and the Y axis and we also have to make sure that the vise is parallel with the, in this case, the X axis. The vise jaws are parallel with the X axis. And I've done this off camera we're less than a thousandth of an inch over six inches there. The Mill is less than a thou out vertically in both planes, and the final thing I checked was the run out on the end the um, edge finder. The run out on the edge finder is less than 0.1 of a thou. So having got that, let's um, have a look at how we use it and how we use it to verify that things are going right. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring it down to the far side. Sorry, my lights, I've got a light here which is getting in the way. Um, so I'm dropping this down to there. Now I'm going to start up the edge finder. The speed of the edge finder is not super critical from what I can see. I've got an um, RPM here of 600 RPM, but I have also tried it out at 900 RPM and it doesn't seem to make a great deal of difference. I don't think you want to go too fast, and you probably don't want to go too slow either, but somewhere between 600 and 900 RPM seems to work satisfactory. So we start this up, and as you see on the other videos on the internet, we simply bring this in, 
until we get concentricity, which I think we are probably doing now. Let's see that a little bit better. So we're close to concentricity there, and you very, very slowly move the y-axis until it just kicks out, and it just did so there. Now at that point, you can set the digital readout on your mill to be zero. And hopefully, I can show it up there. So I've set the digital readout to be zero. And there. I'll just get this in focus again. Hopefully we're back in focus. So the digital readout has been set to zero. We're on one edge. We now move across to the other edge. It always seems more difficult to generate the eccentricity when the thing is revolving, but I think you can see there it is um, running eccentrically. I don't know if that would work. Yeah, let's just try that. So now again, bringing the table towards the edge finder until we have the edge finder. Right, it's just getting close to concentricity there. There, and it's just kicked out. So, I've got 0.6 of a diam, 0.6 of an inch diameter on my test piece. This is 0.2 of an inch, and therefore, the movement that we've had to make is should be 0.8 of an inch. And lo and behold, I just move up to the digital readout. We're reading 0 0.8005. So within half a thou, extremely accurate and um, a good indication of how well an edge finder can, can run. Um, I've seen questions on the internet again and on YouTube about, well, when do you actually set it? Do you set it at the point of kick out, just after the point of kick out, or just before the point? Well, in my experience, let just come back to this, we're probably out of focus yet again. So, just get this in focus. In my experience, the best place to do it is just as it kicks out. So, just to say that again, so let's just start this up and just bring it back in. And the secret is very slowly. And that, that one I did too fast, I can just tell. So bring it in very slowly until you just see it now. We can see it's running virtually con concentric concentrically. And I'm moving it sort of half a thou to there. And it goes out. And again, from a view point of view of repeatability, 0.88. Of 0 0.8005. So we've measured that, as I say, with a high degree of accuracy. Let's just see what happens if we wind up the um, speed of the mill. So I'll come up to a thousand RPM now, and if we just have a look, and hopefully this will. This will give us the same result, so I'll move this in. So we're getting close now, still not quite concentric. 
there. And that time, I'm measuring 0.8001. The advantage of running at that higher speed was that it kicked out further. And we're still within one thou, in fact, within half a thou of the previous um, reading. So I think if you've got any doubts about how to set up your edge finder, it's well worth trying something like this just to uh, satisfy yourself that yes, you are actually right correctly on the edge and you're able to measure with the edge finder and the digital readout. The other thing of course that you should be able to do, and I'll um, demonstrate this, is to measure the length of a part. So. Uh, here we have the same test piece, we measured it previously at 2.004, so let's see how this works. So the same thing, you've got to just go in very, very slowly until you just see the thing kick out. Yeah. I'll set the off camera, I'll set the x axis to zero. And now move to the other end of the piece. So we're at the other end of the piece, I'll just make it a little bit eccentric. Hopefully we're still in focus and we can see that. Yep. Coming up. Just moving it in nice and slowly. So approaching concentricity. just kicked out. The movement is not huge, it's only quite small. You're not looking for an eighth of an inch or anything, you're just looking for it to move out very slightly. So if we remember that the, the length of this was 2.004 and on the digital readout we have 2.203 so we have the length of the reference part as 2.004 plus the 0.2 of uh, the 0.2 diameter of the Starrett edge finder which gives us 2.203 so we're in